Okay, hello. I'm going to share real quick how to do a shadow animation in SketchUp and uh, show how accurate they can be. I really like using these on home models that uh, we're building to make sure we've got different features in the right spot and create realistic um, expectations for the project. So the first thing to do Come up to view, make sure you've got your shadows turned on. Obviously, if they're off, you can't see them. So turn them on. Then if you come over to the right side of your screen, you'll see you have a box, a menu, where you can set your time zone, time of day you want the shadows to be at, the month of the year, and you can adjust the light and the dark in order to get more or less contrast. Pick whichever ones you like. Uh, you can use sun for shading, which I'm gonna explain here in one second. And you wanna make sure that they're being displayed on faces, on the ground and everything. So to make sure these are realistic, you need to tell SketchUp where you are models at in the world. And on the pro version, you can go to file, geolocation, add location, and if you know where this is going to go, or in this case, we have a new construction site and a lot, you can select it and import it. And it doesn't just import the imagery, it also tells SketchUp what latitude and longitude your building is going to be at or object or model. And then it will create shadows based on where the sun will be at that time. So, I've set the shadows to what I like. I have placed the model where it belongs on the planet. And then I'm going to create some scenes again over here on the right to do an animation. So I'll pick something that looks like a good scene. I will name it start. And then I will move the view a little bit for some drama and change to later in the day. Uh, that's too late. How about there? And then I will create another scene that says end. You don't have to name them, but it's good to name scenes, especially when they start to add up. I'll make sure that they are both included in the animation. If you uncheck this, nice thing is, is SketchUp puts parentheses on it. Your scenes are also represented up here as little tabs, so I can tab between them. You can see it moves between them. I can uh, move them, add them, update them, and play the animation from here. So I'm gonna go back, put this back into the animation. And I've also decided I wanna start this a little earlier in the day, more like sunrise. There we go. And I can actually right click and update, and it'll save those changes. Then before playing the animation, I'm gonna to go to view, animation, and settings, and make sure I've got this the way that I want it. 10 seconds, that's probably about right. So now I can play it, and this is a large model. It's a complete house. So my computer's gonna struggle with this animation, I'm sure, but it's going to try to transition. or probably just jump. I kind of tried it. Okay, didn't think it would work. So modeling it live is asking a lot of your computer. So when it can't handle it, you just export the animation to an MP4 file and go to options, change what you need. SketchUp sort of by default has this loop to the starting scene, which basically means it gets to the end and then it goes to the first scene again. I don't want to do that. So I've turned that off and I'll export it. I've already done this because I screwed up the first recording of this. So yes, I want to replace it. And while it waits, I will keep talking so that I can use the audio through the magic of hollywood we will get a look at the finished animation and you get to see 
of what you can do with these tools. And you might ask yourself, how accurate is this for the geolocation? Well, the next video is a real life time lapse set next to a SketchUp animation where we just use the same date time settings and use an Enscape, which is an add on to SketchUp to render it a little more realistically. And I think you'll see it is very accurate, definitely good enough for making design decisions.